This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. is the Wrestling Mayhem Show 689 Tuesdays. We've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wrestling Central, it seems, these days. Mm. Holy shit. Uh, We have a whole crew with us, first of all, remotely from Rizland, from Riz Plays Game Central. Yes, in the Baron Game Tech Quarters, the Baron Walled Wasteland. Is this like your your video side? You usually have a lot more going on behind you. It's been a while since you've been on the show. Behind here? Yeah, I don't know. It's just like it's you got like, this white it, wall. It usually, it, it's, it's, it's just, all I have. Like is this a green screen? It's and all I just, I've had. So. It's all you have. <laughs> yeah. And is this is this, is this where Riz uh, plays like the games? Even when you go to Riz plays games, there's a big wide section of my face. Okay. <laughs> behind. In front of this white wall. Yes. Yeah. That's going to make me watch And that. we just lost four subscribers. Uh, Perfect. Okay. All right. Wrist Plays I Games. I to Wrist Plays Games and subscribe. Hello. Uh, also with us, we have the only Mayhemer with a trading card on the show. Hey. He is Ronnie Ooh. Starks. Hello, everyone. Wait, 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 wait. What? Uh, no, well, yeah. uh, well, the well, only co-host on yo. the show yeah, uh, with a trading card sure. will qualify that. Okay. And also, Ronnie, you have not your championship belt, which will be defended. This, this weekend, Friday, this yeah. Friday at Fight Society, but you have an Ecto One. I have an Ecto One here, guys. There are Ghostbuster toys. We talked about a lot of it. We'll be There's... posting that on YouTube. Wait, wait. So, which on is on Patreon. the line, the championship or the Ecto One? Nobody's it's touching my Ecto, Ecto One on a pole match this Friday. Yeah, well, at I was Fight going Society. to say, if that Ecto One is on the line, I'm canceling my weekend plans and I'm going to show up. <laughs> but if it's just for that belt, yeah, forget yeah, it. I'm yeah, keeping yeah. my weekend plans. Yeah, don't worry about the belt. Don't worry just about, worry the about, belt. about <laughs> worry about the Ghostbuster toys. Happy hour is here. <laughs> Woo! The impossibly sober happy hour, ah. as you were announced as oh, a referee. Oh, I'm not weekend. close to sober. Oh, that's geez. for sure. <laughs> so happy hour is here, and that means that there is there are uh, from some consumables. Uh, there are no laws on this podcast tonight. Because we got some claw. I know. I know. Uh, Mac wow. is gonna pop for that. Okay. No. Ro- <laughs> what? Sorg, are you are you are you uh, partaking in the white claw? I am partaking. I just yes. held it up. Mm-hmm. Right, because I, I have a, a raspberry. Because I'm not a damn savage. <laughs> <laughs> I have a wild cherry because I'm a savage. Ooh, no. Black oh, cherry. <laughs> no, you were trying to hand me a grapefruit. Like you're, a, you're like, don't you dare. <laughs> like, oh, like I've got a raspberry because I'm not a damn sandwich. That's that's right. <laughs> yeah. Hey. 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 I the holidays have come early to the Mayhem Show. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, we are here. It is time to talk about professional wrestling. <laughs> and uh, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find links to subscribe to us in podcast and video form or look us up on your favorite platform. And if we're not there, hey, let us know and we'll uh, do what we can to get over there. Um, except for your cable providers. Jeez. Sorry, that's not happening. Hey, hey, no. professional over there. I'm sorry. Professional I'm getting excited. There. Okay. You can it. also ask your Google Home, your Amazon Echo, your uh, Apple AirPod, or your EarPods, I guess, uh, <laughs> to listen to the Wrestling Mayhem Show podcast on all those platforms with your voice piece. And also, you can drop us an email address at Good Times. Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412206. WMS Zero is the hotline that you can put on under under drunk dial on your phone, please. At Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Facebook page, and group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. A lot of great discussions happening there throughout the week, including trying to figure out what's happening halfway across the world uh, this <laughs> week. A lot of speculation, a lot of stories. It was like oh, it was it like it, it was like worse. it was like Information Central. And of course, we're here every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live. Plenty of other formats. We're out there on the Twitch, on the Facebook, on the Periscope, Twitter uh mixer on your xbox i think we just reconnected that uh so we're back live on your xbox (laughs) yeah the mixer (laughs) you all right over there (laughs) it's this fucking 
uh, ninja. Hey, it's good enough for AJ Styles to talk about Saudi Arabia. It's good enough for us, right? That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a really good point. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you can check us out on all those platforms. And if you're catching us later uh, in the replay feed or checking it out uh, on demand, uh, please, uh, uh, if you want to comment, have anything else to follow up on, please hit us up at Mayhem Show on the Twitter with the hashtag WMS689 to continue the conversation. Thank you to our... Uh, Thank you to our streaming partner, the405media.com, still carrying this show and replaying it every evening so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem. And thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Our friends at the fan of the show, $1 level, Bo Diggity! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and Team Hammer Fist. And our friends at the Potkey Club, $5 level. They get some extra special stuff like Ronnie Stark's watching matches. Mm-hmm. You're <laughs> That's welcome. been happening a lot. We should have you watch the War Games match. You kind <laughs> of already did, but... I mean, I can. <laughs> I mean, you can again. You were in it. So, yeah. I mean, we can just do a replay of that uh, Frog Splash. Uh, just let it, no, that's not something Ooh. I've ever got. Yeah, yeah. That frog splatter? The frog splatter. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm going to jump off. There's the a lot of splatter uh, throughout the night. Pocket Club $5. Love our thanks to our friends Bradley Ruthers, who I'm uh, uh, desperately trying to get also in a match at the next BTW show. <laughs> and uh, Doc hey. Remedy. They, you never know. Speaking of Bradley Ruthers, yeah, I was proposing he should uh, have a match with a bottle of Heinz ketchup. Then he Ooh. put over the Heinz ketchup and said, yeah, he's not quite ready for Heinz. So I s- suggested, wait, is he going under to a bottle of Heinz ketchup? They give me some great value action there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and also our friends, <laughs> Doc Gravity, Dave Potter, and Kyle Turner at the Pizza Club $10 level. At the $13 mic is Ryan Clark. And the manager of, at a $20 level is Occupy Pro Wrestling. Dot com our good buddies there on the west coast you can support the show as well patreon.com slash wrestling ma'am show get some extra content and such so do we want to start with a happy or want to start with a controversy what's the controversy let's, <laughs> let's do happy first who, who doesn't have the controversy let's, these let's days? continue let's start with the happy good i don't have a happy story <laughs> okay then let's do the controversy. Such an unprofessional <laughs> i don't have one ready <laughs> it's professional wrestling it's professional wrestling therefore right well wrestling. technically the the controversy kind of it led to the melds happy. into the happy yeah kind how, of sort of how about adam cole is like the Maybe. mvp of the week isn't he yes yeah. right I yes. mean, it, you, you could tell they're not, they're not shy about putting him out there. Maybe not on purpose the first time, but uh, well, see, he's with the pros of like Daniel Bryan and, and Seth Seth Rollins, right? Happy? Can I just call you Happy for sure? <laughs> hey, I don't, we're I in the know. happy segment, so why not? I can't remember no, what it, the protocol it, it, is. In all seriousness, this whole thing. I'll say this: with the whole Saudi Arabia mess, mm-hmm. uh, I will say, it, if nothing else, it it took something of that scale. To, I guess force Vince to do something creative and he, being that he was put in a bind to say oh shit now I have to uh, put people on who can wrestle and people want to see what happens <laughs> oh wow it's like give the got. viewers what they want against his will <laughs> right right yeah. and, 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 and yeah, I gotta yeah, say sure. like it's probably fast tracking we talked about this a good bit with Mad Mike and, and uh, Nick Farah uh, last night on the Monday Mayhem. Nobody up. talks to Matt, uh, <laughs> Nick uh, Farrow. Yeah, well, the business, his dude. mic barely works. So, right. um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was a little of like I, I think they were going to do this anyways. It just kind of got fast tracked mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of the situation. Um, really astonishing. As again, as we were talking about a lot on the on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, um, this idea that they they you know the plane landed at seven fifty five at Buffalo Airport and they got a police escort in. And when you saw the NXT. Uh, like Shayna Baser, like mm. barely got in position for when you first saw her, mm. mm-hmm. like that kind of stuff happening. That's impressive. You know, oh, that absolutely. Able to pull, like you know, not getting into the stuff that happened in Saudi Arabia, but that they could pull that off. And also, we have deep enough of a roster that we can pull something like this. See, mm-hmm. that's right? actually a great point. Roster depth. The roster is so deep, but the problem is there. Uh, until recently, or until their hand was forced, they were just relying on the safety of what was already proven Mm -hmm. and not willing to take the risk uh, of, hey, the roster is so deep, why why don't we demonstrate the quality of our depth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, That's what they need to do with with going up against AEW. Like, SmackDown and AEW go head-to-head. AEW doesn't have... You mean NXT. 
Oh no, that's right, NXT. Never NXT. Mind. But yeah, but still, NXT and AEW go head to head, and they're bringing in stars mm-hmm. from WWE that they don't use to go up against AEW. AEW has the group core that they have. Mm-hmm. Somebody like Omega, Page, Cody gets knocked out, Jericho, something like that. Who's coming up? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sammy? Yeah. Here. I mean, there, there's... If, if, if there was like, let's say AEW goes on an international tour to like, let's just say Europe, right? Something happens. They're way late. They don't make it to Buffalo, New York to do an AEW show. Let's say that's, you know, similar. Just for parody here. Um, where does they, if you don't have an AEW roster, it's not that deep. Uh, nowhere near as deep. You no. know, it's not even as deep as probably even just SmackDown at this point. Right. Well, so, being... so, like, but with that, I mean, you do have the indies to call on. Mm-hmm. These guys That's know enough true. people that they think well, would be reliable. I here's think, the right? other thing. AEW, from a business standpoint, uh, you know, when you have a company like AEW, whoever the business people in charge are, they really need to have a handle of what they can and can't get away with. Mm-hmm. So, for example, I don't expect, uh, say, on a Tuesday night for AEW <laughs> yeah. to run Europe uh, and, you know, put themselves <laughs> in a potential bind. No, yeah, if they yeah, do yeah, Europe, yeah. they'll do Europe uh, on hey, a weekend, and that way they'll have a couple of days should they need to, uh, you know, readjust and uh, restabilize to be ready for the Wednesday TV and, show. And to be mm-hmm. fair, uh, uh, obviously, like here in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, I think it was a matter of the venue size and the loading docks, but mm-hmm. they started setting up on Monday for the Wednesday show. Right. Whereas, and again, four weeks in, you know, they're pulling people from separate productions that they, and, and, and making this versus 25 years, 30 years of lineage with WWE production, right? So, I mean, this is this is apples and oranges right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, absolutely. No matter what absolutely. you think. They're like, oh, they're not as good as WWE. No. Nobody is as good at WWE on live production except maybe the NFL. Right. right. And you have to consider the bankroll involved to make that happen. Yes. You have to have the bank. I mean, in addition to the bodies, you also have to have the bankroll to be able to uh, accommodate potential catastrophes. There was a Monday night football truck sitting in front of Heinz Field at least the Thursday before. Yes. <laughs> so that tells you what that is. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's a whole different world. Um, I mean, that high level production, barely anybody I know is in, involved in it. I know a couple of people that help set it up when they come to town. That's it. Right. Um, so, I mean, it's a whole other animal. And for us as wrestling fans to be kind of judging that, mm-hmm. like, I think one of those like, hey, the, the uh, you know, it, we see this in tech, too. But it's like, hey, all of a sudden, once a quarter, everybody becomes a financial expert. In the wrestling right. world, you know, right, exactly. uh, you know, yeah. things like that. So when you're reading like these dirt sheets and things, also remember, like, you know, does somebody have a financial background to really interpret what's happening when we talk about like, you know, the ups and downs and TV deals and everything like that? Now, it's the a good reporter. It's their job to translate that for the rest of us. Correct. Right. Mm. And, and unfortunately, there are more of them now, but there are not a whole lot <laughs> When you talk about wrestling news. Oh, of course not. And I think the big thing uh, with the wrestling business in general is that, you know, uh, just as individual people, we can have our own individual thoughts, our own personal thoughts to whatever capacity we have. But when it comes to actual execution of whatever our role is, we need to stay in our own lane. I mean, you know, if we're a wrestler, I mean, some of us, uh, there's not many wrestlers with incredible business sense. So, you know, uh, there are some guys that are just kind of uh, speaking without having, you know, the full capacity to evaluate uh, end to end. There are, uh, you know, to your point about uh, reporters, uh, reporters who can actually convey the information, really what their job is to basically take what's happening at what's happening and convey it to a level that's digestible to the consumer. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are some that uh, really spend more time making it controversial or obfuscating what's really happening in order to get people riled up because riled up people uh, seem to be great for ratings or great for <laughs> competition or great of for, course. you know, or even now in the social media age, great for just getting social media buzz going. Right. But right. really, at the end of the day, a reporter's job really should be to take what's happening and convey it to the average person in a readable manner. I love there's a conversation. <laughs> I love I, I do love I do love when we get in these conversations and, and, and thankful for you guys on the show and, and, and even somebody in the chat room. Uh, uh, you guys are in the business, you know, on a level here. Uh, so you understand a little bit about how the business works and even like, you know, hey, 
corporate wrestling is different even from that, right? Um, mm-hmm. There's a question about uh, uh, from our buddy Dan in the chat room. Hello, Dan. What's up, Dan Sandwich? Uh, I said, you know, what <laughs> he he was kind of questioning the the idea that the NXT NXT guys came over uh, and, and got over on like uh, you know the Miz and Daniel Bryan, the two vets. I mean, I think that's kind of just to give a little credibility to them, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's a first thing, but it, it has a little bit of shock value. Mm-hmm. And on a night that was pretty much all about shock, shock value and right. what the hell to expect, it sounds like that. That seems like the the play to be like if you've never watched NXT and don't give a crap and just watch SmackDown and Raw. Now you're like, hey, what are these guys, mm-hmm. right? You know, uh, you know the good point and the bad point about that. The good point is you're absolutely right. It was a perfect opportunity and a perfect way to set up or create that uh, step up uh, in that particular scenario. The negative is just the fact that it had to be in this circumstance for it to happen. If not for this circumstance, this would have ne- uh, this would be way delayed. Mm-hmm. Uh, back on the uh, back on the uh, uh, wrestling. Uh, 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 News side of things, uh, Tina's pointing out Ryan Satin from, um, I want to say Satan, uh, from Pro Wrestling <laughs> Sheet is a new correspondent on WWE yeah. Backstage. You're seeing that. All the, the radio, podcast, news people are coming in and becoming commentary people on uh, WWE uh, programming. I imagine yep. they're the better ones. But also, like, I mean, also remember a lot of these jobs, like, you know, we talk about Mark Madden. I mean, we know from WCW, but um, he still does sports talk radio on here. And he just comes out and has an opinion and gets people riled up. That's his point, right? Um, yeah, he's, he's a good heel. It's, oh, he's great. Oh, it, 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 and he's, he's, the, he's the best at it, and that's why he's probably one of the best in his time slot and has been for years, right? Mm-hmm. So that's why he's still doing stuff all these years later, right? I think that's the only reason why I listen to the X. Yeah? Like, yeah. Because like, the, the radio station is just terrible in general. That's why <laughs> yeah. I've, that's radio why I've, is just terrible yeah. in general. <laughs> that's why I have XM safe, radio. Like, safe for Mark Madden and, and Mikey and Big Bob. Yeah, so, you it. know, I mean, really. Dude, Mikey and Big Bob are great. They're, they're amazing. Yeah. They're amazing. Uh, so, but anyways, I, we didn't get them. I, we've had them on some tech shows in here a think, long time ago. Think we can get Mark Madden on here? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, we probably could. You want me to send out some emails? I mean, we I've worked we I worked with them in the past, so really? I mean, you just be like, hey man. Me. I was totally yeah. to send out some more emails. I don't know what we I don't know what we do with them. I mean, it, it's one of those. I don't want man. I don't want people on the show just to ha- be, have them on the show. Yeah, like I, right. I you you know this. I, I only invite certain people on the show. Mm-hmm. You know when I have a vibe with them, and I don't know the vibe. I, well, if I Mark Madden's all right. But if I put him in front of a microphone, I know we're getting Mark mad. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> he won't water and then it's like, oh, God, what are we going to do with this? So, uh, you know, to be honest, but uh, that would be awesome to do something like that for, you know, we could have some fun with that. Um, so, Mark, if you're out there, we know you listen. <laughs> so, I mean, you're only a hill over doing your thing. So yeah, we know where you live. Yeah. Well, <laughs> during the afternoons, at least. Uh, anyways, <laughs> where was I going with that stuff? Um, but no, I mean, as with everything, watch what you read, watch what you believe. Um, mm-hmm. It's always interesting when I have, you know, fans at, you know, uh, at the at the grocery store or something. <laughs> and they, they, I hear them spout something from like a dirt sheet. And it's like, ah, yeah, you know, don't believe that, man. And, and and the thing with Saudi is kind of a perfect example of that, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're hearing we're hearing things. They're but ha- they just signed a new deal for like. But they just years. signed a new deal. Uh, it was made out in the dirt sheets, and I, I well, I say everything with air quotes here. Please qualify that when I talk about this. Um, it was it was made out that it, it it makes it sound like Vince didn't get paid for the last two shows in Saudi Arabia from the Saudi prince, and uh, as if that's a direct transaction. Uh, and 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 it made it like like he he delayed and would not put out the feed alive in Saudi Arabia while you're in Saudi Arabia and immediately got on the first plane plane out of town just like he's an indie promoter that, promoter that just left with the gate. Uh, <laughs> that's what it feels like from the stories, right? So like I'm like this sounds familiar, but with more money and in the desert. Uh, <laughs> So and without Bulls Mahoney showing up at your door, yeah. But <laughs> An equal amounts of people trying to kill you. Yeah, exactly. Maybe <laughs> some more more tactical. Uh, but of course, everybody got stuck there. Mechanical failure. Um, <laughs> uh, the one thing out of all this that I can fault WWE for, one thing that they definitely did wrong was putting out back. a statement. Not going. Okay, okay, going back. <laughs> This can be still debatable whether you're a business mind or a, or a human's rights mind on this. Uh, so, but um, um, 
going out and doing a statement about like, hey, some people aren't making it for SmackDown. Some of the guys felt so strongly about making the show that they they chartered their own plane. Meanwhile, everybody else is on the tarmac reading this and have been very vocal on Twitter and said, oh, I guess I'm not uh, I guess I'm not faithful enough to the company to charter my own plane. Uh, you know, you're Luke Harper's, you're uh, uh, Anderson, you're, you know, uh, uh, Curtis Axel with his dog. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, things like that. Uh, that is that's a disservice to your employees, like mm-hmm. through and through. It has to be. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, you don't just take certain people with you and leave everybody behind. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. Like, yeah. that's, that's not cool. Like, I get that Brock got up because he's got his own plane, right? Yeah. I get it, like, maybe Tyson and Kane did, right? Because they're Tyson and Kane. You yeah. know, they, they, I mean, they're obviously different people. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's, but to say, like, well, you know, in this situation, I'm like, well, sure, Roman Reigns went and chartered his own plane because he's Roman Reigns. Yeah. Right? But also, like, remember, like, Curtis Axel does not get Roman Reigns money. They can charter his own damn plane halfway across the world yeah. like, in a I reasonable was, manner. I was following the whole ordeal through the Street Profits Twitter feed. Mm. And you can tell they're they're trying their best to, like, make it okay. But I, way you saw like the eyes, the the reaction, the the feeling of what the hell are we still doing here? Mm-hmm. Even though they're not saying it, that was deep. Like mm-hmm. you can tell that was m- what most of the people in the ba- in in that area was thinking. Mm-hmm. Why am I still here? Why do I? Why am I on this plane, waiting for this plane? Mm-hmm. Where's my plane? I want to get out of here. And you can see that in, um, and not Montez Ford. The I forget what his that one is, but but you can see it when he was just dead staring at the camera. You talking about Luke Harper? No, not Luke Harper. Uh, okay. Street Profits. Dawkins. Dawkins. Angela yes. Dawkins. Yes, he like the dead stare that he had. Yeah. When yeah. waiting for, waiting for the plane, getting off the plane, just <laughs> that, just that feeling of, that was the longest trip I've ever. It was taken. also like, oh, so this is what it's like on the main roster too. Mm-hmm. Um. So I mean, there's that too. It's like welcome to Raw, and the desert. Um, it's yeah. interesting, uh, you know, and we'll see how it develops. I mean, I'm sure it's kind of a thing that's going to be addressed or has been addressed, you know, just like the controversy last, last week. I'm sure somebody has had a conversation. Um, and, uh, and we'll see what happens with that. Uh, let's see. I'm just double checking. I know you guys have some comments. Uh, you know, Al- Alex Allen, California sh- is saying how many people will not go to Saudi next show. I think some a more, lot. I think some more people will take the option not to. Yeah. Um, right. Un- oh, absolutely. Unless, unless they're like. You know, getting put in a you know, we'll give you more money because you were, uh, say Seth Rollins or something. And like I, that. I wouldn't be surprised if there you you don't see more. <laughs> well, I I would be I wouldn't be surprised if you see more celebrities, part like legends, just to make an appearance there. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, just here, to have filler. Here, uh, you know, sorry to interject, but. You know, this will go beyond wrestling, and I mean, in part because I've I personally have been very vocal against uh, the government of Saudi Arabia for decades. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and yeah. I, and, no, I mean, you know, if from my own experiences, I've been to Saudi Arabia a number of times, and I've understood just, you know, wh- what the culture and the climate is. You know, th- they're the type of guys that you know. Uh, you could be like, uh, oh, well, hey, yeah, let me go to the bank, get uh, $10 million. And a Saudi's going to be like, oh, that's cute, cute. Or let me look and see where in the hamper I put my $10 million in which pants that are going going to put in the laundry. And I'm just like, you know, uh, th- that's just the kind of people that that's the, I mean, particularly the aristocracy. That is just how they are. And I've experienced that directly firsthand many times. And the problem is, you know, for all the situations where, uh, you know, it's brought up, there will be a number of folks thinking twice. Uh, sadly, to borrow from the million dollar man, everybody does have a price. Mm-hmm. People are going to think twice until uh, Saudi basically just uh, ups the ante and says, 
or tell you what, for your trouble, I will give you, uh, you know, extra zero on your check. Yeah. And, uh, and we, we know reports from Jericho, they're saying they got paid more money to, to be able to bring Shawn Michaels out of retirement. It was oh, more yeah. money than they've oh. ever been offered for a, right. wrestling, for a exactly. single wrestling match, right? Exactly. So, and, and to them, it's play money. Yeah, it's play yeah. money to them. Yeah, and, and it's it's um, you know there's a comment I've been kind of rolling in my head, and, and unfortunately it applies to this. There's you know it, well it applies to other parts of the business, but there's like wrestling business business, and then there's like business business. And when things don't make to, sense to us as you know fans, wrestlers, whatever, what WWE does, you got to think you know hey why is so and so not getting over? I was like well who's selling the t-shirts? Right, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that's how the math. That's how the wrestling math is happening there, mm -hmm. and, and and it's happening to a different extent when we talk about Saudi Arabia. And then what happens is fans, like we, you know, we are fans of WWE. How do we protest that? Do we all cancel WWE Network at least for the month they're out there? You know, what is that? It permeates everything in entertainment. They'll still have your money. Yeah, yep. it, 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 doesn't it matter. Really does. Exactly. Yeah. I say you you can't protest anything because WWE just has all yeah, the Saudi are, money. So. They, you're, they already have your nine ninety nine, mm -hmm. and this you're is already and to be fair, and it. also to be clear, this is a conversation that's not happening now in the wrestling world. This is a thing happening in technology. This is happening mm -hmm. in other business sectors because a, a, a lot of company is coming from Middle East, China, and everybody's now questioning the source of a lot of those. So this is nothing. This has just hit our little corner of our little fandom right now, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and you can tell it's been hitting a lot harder and harder and harder every time they go over. Mm -hmm. Like it, it just the amount of like the snowball effect just keeps um, getting bigger. To be honest, and, to be quite honest, WWE should just stop talking about it and presenting it and just do a show there. Just mm -hmm. do a 60,000, 40,000 seat stadium, what? do a show, what? do it for them, broadcast it there. You know, like they do the European pay per views, mm -hmm. and, they would and get it out of the purview, not be talking about it on three shows a week in right. America uh, where we have a problem with. It. And I'm just saying from a PR not, aspect. I'm just saying from a PR aspect, right? Well, that's good. That's fine. That's fine and good. Mm. But you also have to remember, the Saudi government is paying for that. Yeah, yeah. The Saudi government wants everybody to see. Yeah. That look what we bring. To Saudi Arabia. Look at all this stuff we bring here. Mm -hmm. And so if you're saying, okay, let's just cut it, let's just cut it from the network, mm -hmm. cut the head off the snake, let's just get rid of it. That's yeah. not gonna be good because it's they not, want that. It's not just for the Saudis, the Saudis want you to see what's happening there, right? Yeah. So they want they want you to see that, that what they want you to see unfortunate well there's plenty of other companies out there so if you do want to move on holy shit hey. we got options we've been talking about a lot of them and we mm -hmm. will here in a moment but in, in the meantime another option hey you know what who's definitely not backed by saudi money is indie wrestling.us mm -hmm. uh <laughs> check it out wow. indie wrestling .us. that is a segue sword that's, we're that's going there. Story. We're going to go there. So, And next week we'll be broadcasting from IndieWrestling.sa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, God, I hate I hate that wrestling has to be politicized like this now. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's what it is, unfortunately. Uh, and and it's it's gotten so big. You know, we, we, we've, uh, we've, this isn't an ad. Fuck it. IndieWrestling.net. <laughs> IndieWrestling.network. It's no... Indie Wrestling Network. It's... It's... It's, it's uh, 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 non-conflict professional wrestling. Ooh, I think we're going to work on that. I want to work on a tagline with that now. We'll get that to the marketing department. Uh, of course, we just had the big thing. Of course, a participant in the War Games. Nope, that's not Riz. That guy. Not me. That guy with the Ecto-1. I was, not, one. He was, I in was the, not in the blue cage. He was in the big blue cage in War Games. That's before he had the Ecto-1. And uh, so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> My ribs uh, hurt. Potter says, "Hate murderers and treasonous leeches. Support IndieWrestling.us." <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, from the man who said, "Kick the door down with slice on Broadway," and I say, "Please don't." Uh, yeah. But uh, no, we did, uh, War Games, uh, the uh, Cage Carnage with uh, Black Diamond Wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, that was a fun show. That was a damn fun show. That you were, I, I'm sure it was painful on your end. Yeah, but, my ribs uh, hurt. There were some good matches, but the crowd. I I, I can't say enough about 
how wow, much the wow. crowd was into it. That was my favorite part of the night. And that, you know, ignore uh, happy hour chance aside, seriously, <laughs> I was actually paying attention to most of the show. Yeah. And the crowd energy was very good for most of the happy show. Happy hour comes out for two matches, the referee. While As a referee, a, and I get a bigger referee. pop than the wrestlers. As holding a, be- a beer, by the <laughs> yeah. way. And then, like, and then the next match, I look over my shoulder, and I'm like, he's just sitting in the crowd. I'm just like, what the hell? going on here uh <laughs> so but you could do that in these uh, friends at uh, black diamond wrestling out of benwood west virginia south mm-hmm. of uh wheeling west virginia oh, oh so a lot of great stuff you know there's there's a lot of wrestling going on this weekend our friends rise wrestling and uh prospect pro wrestling both gearing up for their december anniversary shows which are also the same night uh <laughs> that month too uh but a lot of great stuff there and those will be coming up in the coming weeks on india wrestling dot network 599 seven day free trial go check out what Go go check out the area that produced uh, Elias and Britt Baker and Walking Wild and and uh, uh, Wardlow. You know, a, you know a lot of that going on around here. And of course, IndieWrestling.us. Our friends are over there from UXWA. Just got on board. We're going back to Cleveland to uh, film the next one with Big Vito from WCW is going to be there. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's, that's going to cool. be fun. Uh, Revenge Pro. Uh, we check out Wardlow's last match up there. Uh, from the last show uh, against PV Smooth, who's also you're going to see on your TV sooner or later, I swear. Uh, our friends main event on a lot of these shows, too. Uh, a lot of great stuff over there. Buff Bagwell was at RWA last month. Yeah, uh, he was. Hanging with uh, you got to see Buff Bagwell yeah, in person. He's so Riz. buff, and he looks exactly the same. <laughs> he does, strangely and creepily, but he does, and it's Even great. without the steroids? Uh, well, no. Uh... Other conversations, yeah. so, but uh, anyways, but no, check out everything, IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network, uh, another way you can support Indie Wrestling, so, uh, <laughs> oh, the chat room is still still reeling from that last conversation. I try so hard to keep those conversations off this show, but they're just so strong right now. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we, we had, I mean, there's other news going on, other wrestling, other wrestling in, in the news, um, other people going off on Twitter. Uh, we talked about Jordan Miles a little Actually, bit last week. We had, yeah, only Lorkin? Oh, really? I don't know. Only Lorkin got suspended. No, what would he do? I don't know. Oh, did he block you? No, no. <laughs> well, first of all, I don't have a personal Twitter account anymore. No, that's right. Do we know why you got kicked off at of Twitter? No. No, they don't even tell you. They don't even tell me. God. I have to log on to Twitter myself, but. At this point, I'm like, I don't even know my password, so I'm just going to... Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So it's more about... It's not about, like, it's a mystery. It's just like... My By the way, follow me at Riz Plays Games on Twitter <laughs> and Twitch and everything else. All right. <laughs> Rebuild the house. I got it. But we had Shane Taylor in here on uh, Friday, uh, the uh, uh, Ring of Honor World TV champion. Um, but, uh, in, in, of course, they were here in Pittsburgh, and maybe some of you saw my close calls with wrestling on saturday yeah i'm glad uh, you didn't stand up <laughs> good thing i didn't stand up <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah kenny king hopping over my head that was fun it was yeah a, that was it, somebody said almost it, an injury waiting to happen somebody so. said somebody said it looked like um uh back when Eamon had like ach speaking of Jordan yeah. miles uh uh do a, like a wall run over his head or something <laughs> I, no I he did the splits up, like above his head was it a split above his head yes uh, was that it I don't know. He did, yes. he did some move over the top of his head and he just kind of had that like jump thing. And apparently I did the same thing. Uh, but anyways, other than that, but Shane was on. He did talk a little bit about Jordan Miles. Also, uh, apparently as he walked in here, he found out about the Joey Mercury rant <clears throat> uh, where Joey had uh, apparently had quit Ring of Honor, uh, running down some things about safety concerns and, and, and people's pay were being revealed, including friend of the show, Kelly Klein. Uh, and uh, and things like that, including revealing, hey, Shane Taylor's contract's not going to get renewed at the end of the year. <laughs> to yeah. which to which he walked in and said, it would say, nah, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so he did, he made some statements on the Indie Mayhem show Friday when he was in here live. Uh, you can check out clips of that on our social media for Wrestling Mayhem Show Indie, Indie Wrestling US as well. Um, but it is it, had, it was such a weird week between Saudi that was happening in the midst of the the travel woes. Uh, Jordan Miles earlier last week is it, it just a lot of um, reactions to businesses behaving badly, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I got to say that uh, AEW has to be smiling ear from ear over the weekend. Uh, so, but you know, it, it's 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 kind of an interesting thing. And of course, I, I noticed that Ring of Honor. Um, you know, thankfully going into two shows where uh, they were kind of more creative shows. Uh, they did experience here that was kind of I liken it to a Taboo Tuesday, Riz. 
back in mm-hmm. the day where they had a lot of fan pick stuff. We got to see Jeff Cobb twice because he was picked twice for matches, one against Dragon Lee, another one in a six-man tag, uh, team with Colton Cheeseburger against Villain Enterprises with Dan Maff filling in for Brody, uh, Brody King. Brody King? Nice. Yeah, not Brody Lee. That's, yeah, that's Luke Harper. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> and then they did Unauthorized, which I love this. One one side was uh, uh, Shane Shane Taylor uh, Promotions, including our friend Rev, the Rev Ron Hunt, by the way. And on the other side was Cole Cabana, Ian Riccoboni, the announced the, the the commentator, the ring announcer, I believe, was a part of it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Todd Sinclair, the referee, who did a leapfrog. <laughs> mm-hmm. He does not look like the most spry individual. <laughs> no, no, sorry, Todd. And the cameraman, <laughs> yeah, was the cameraman ringside. Was- on the ring, ringside, in a match, still holding his camera. I wonder if he's the same Sword. one that Kenny King had the issue with, where he ran right into the camera and knocked himself out of, uh, that they made fun of on the show this last oh, week. Oh, gosh. Did you Sword. guys see that? I, 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 I think we have a new, new experience for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Take like the know. camera straight to the I face remember side. when uh, <laughs> I, well, I said I, I, I can't I can't say that I didn't have fantasies of having a, a you know cameraman run in for a wrestling match being being worked in somehow. But also I watched how that worked out for Dan Hooven when he got involved at first. So there is that yeah. and then, uh one one of your cameraman got cameraman got kicked in the nuts at one time. Oh yeah, Jock Sampson kicked Chachi in the nuts yeah. at one side. It was for his was birthday. It was it was easy. He yelled happy birthday. birthday. You heard the the dong of the of his cowbell and then Chachi hitting the floor. Uh <laughs> it was it was a pretty good time. At least he saved the camera. At least he saved the camera. That's all that matters. And then we told his fiance. Uh, so, <laughs> uh but hey say a lot of weird stuff going on there. Um uh <laughs> when do I get to see a Vincent Hill turn on TV? What? Oh Vincent what? Which Vincent? I don't know. Uh, in the like chat room. Virgil? Virgil's Vincent? Well, no. Vir- no, we're not I don't want anything no, to do no. with Virgil. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. No. Driving him home was like... Oh, no. The- oh. Really? I, okay. Here we Story go. Time. So yeah. uh, back in June, I was on that Legends uh, of Wrestling show in Bell Vernon oh. at the Ross River Ice Gardens. Yeah, which used to run East, uh, Ring of Honor when they started doing TV back then. Yeah, so mind you, yeah, I was just like, uh, when I got, I, sh- I was basically asked at the last minute if I was available, and I showed up and was like, hey, you want to be Tito Santana's tag team partner? I'm like, yeah, I want to be Tito <laughs> Santana's tag team partner. Do I? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> so it was Team Santana versus Team Papa. So uh, after all said and done, you know, sell some merch, blah, blah, blah. Uh, afterwards, promoter comes up to me. It's like, hey, uh, I need you to take Virgil home. I'm like, what? Uh, mm. It's like, oh. okay. So I was like, whatever. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, the guy. Wow. I don't know where to begin, but all I can say is if there was ever a person that needed a mute button, that's yeah. the person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is the yeah. person. I will, uh, I will, I will save the stories because we've told it multiple times here on the show <laughs> to the break, and uh, Riz and I can tell you our stories. And yeah. I have a uh, Riz's so, story too. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who, we all who have. Does it? If you live, that is. Listen, listen. There's two things in Pittsburgh wrestling uh, that you, if you, you haven't been around uh, Pittsburgh wrestling enough, if you don't have a Bruno story or a Virgil story, and they're mm-hmm. both very opposite of each other. Of yeah. course, it changes now obviously with Bruno's passing unfortunately but i'm mean, but but it, you know in recent i think years, now it's like a dominic denucci story now it's a, oh yeah dominic denucci <laughs> and man i got a friend with a really good story <laughs> uh, so uh that got brought up the other day but anyways um i don't know maybe nord zoltan will be the next one too i mean wait, hey zoltan's a lot around a lot he's Can wrestling we... again he popped up at a sam, wait, sam what's that? show Can we... Uh, Lord Zoltan popped up at a, at a Sam Madonna show in Irwin last month. Yeah, well, actually, uh, I hung out with him after the AEW show a week and a half ago. It was me, Spiffy, Sean Styles, yeah. and Zoltan. We hung out together before I and love after it. the show. Yeah. Oh, I right. love it. He's, he's getting out there. What's that? I ran into you guys. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, like Lord Zoltan, uh, 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 beat cancer? Uh, it seems oh, to be. He seems to be in good spirits. Yeah, he's good. Seems to be up and, up and about. Right. Uh, I believe he was uh, out with his son and uh, Nasty Nick Crane. And, uh, yeah, we all seem to be having a great time eating and drinking. I mean, I was going to say, definitely since uh, I have friends who have been fighting cancer, have fought cancer, beat cancer, still fighting. Yeah, he looks like he's definitely on the correct side of things. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Kingdom Vincent. That was So that was the guy with the red balloons, okay, <laughs> uh, that, that came out to, to like, Caribbean music and, and uh, cut open Taven's forehead with, a, with an axe. 
Uh, so that was Wait, fun. What? Yeah, what? no, I was there for that one. It's I'm sure it'll be all huh. over their TV. It's on their website. What? Uh yeah. Yeah, Ring of Honor is like going Are they places, to man. Show that? Uh, well, well it was on it was on Honor Club, so I'm sure they'll edit it for TV. So wow. it was it was you know, it's online eye pay per view. <coughs> well, it's their it's their W network basically, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, you know, using X to cut somebody open, that's um, cool, I guess. I mean it was in so it was interesting. Like Ring of Honor I mean, you can tell they took a hit. I mean yeah. that's just obvious right oh yeah um there were a lot of empty seats and i remember that place selling out like about a year ago mm-hmm. you know i remember not being able to get a ticket and getting in with a press pass with my my tv friends mm-hmm. um you know so so it's been a 180 with as far as that goes um but i feel like i don't know if this bad or, or whatever at least they're like corporate backed and stuff um and uh and and people going off on uh uh <laughs> Uh, I, I love. I mentioned. I mentioned Eamon and his hus- and his husband pops up in the chat room like not five <laughs> minutes later. <laughs> so, uh, what's up, Josh? Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh, but yeah, it, it's definitely there. Ring of Honor never fails to put on a good show. Mm-hmm. As my like, yep. I don't. It's hard to watch. You know, it's hard to watch everything. But it's always like, hey, they're coming to Pittsburgh. Catch up with the show. What's going on? And it, you see what's going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe Hendry. Is somebody you should check out because I yes. believe in Joe Hendry. Yep. yep, it's one yes. of the greatest things I saw that in the mm-hmm. show, and I was like, I can't wait to see this guy in person. Um, and it was like you could tell, like the people there were definitely like still the diehard Ring of Honor people, mm-hmm. right? And it's really cool to see. Um, again, it's not the same vibe; they're definitely rebuilding, but the, it, it's it's good stuff. I know uh, Joe Dabrowski had some good stuff. He um, uh, worked the Columbus show. Um, do, got pulled into commentary since the mm-hmm. commentator was in a wrestling match. Uh, so, <laughs> so it was like, hey, fortunate I'm here. Um, uh, also, Nick Lendl got taken out by uh, Maria Manic here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, so nice. uh, that was fun. Uh, so uh, that was scary for Nick, I think. But mm. um, now, so it, it's it's another alternative. It, it's definitely you know not as much buzz going on as um as what they're doing with AEW or anything like that uh but they are announcing more they're getting out there more on different uh platforms I think Sinclair just bought some regional sports networks uh so and they're, they're going to be on that yeah they're mm-hmm. going to be on those so i mean that and, you know we've always talked about like new york city can't get ring of honor you know my mike can't watch ring of honor on television mm-hmm. but um but you know this should hopefully fill in some of those gaps mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so i mean a- anything with that's good for them uh, but it's it's man, they were around when they were like it was WWE and them mm-hmm. doing this TV deal, and now it's like they went from number two easy to like four, four two. in a short period of time, in a right. very short. Like yep. I can't believe how quickly they did. Yeah, you know, I, I you know I love the guys there, and I love to see Shane kill, killing it, but you know that is the reality. You know? And as we talk, they they're getting really close to being number five. I, impact yeah. is coming up. Well, I call it Impact Three. So, uh, oh, Impact right. Three. I'm not counting New Japan uh, in my mind because I'm. The, okay. uh, I don't think their American footprint is there yet, although it's on its way. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, so, so yeah, Joe Hendry, local hero. Uh, <laughs> because there's NWA Power. And NWA power. power is amazing. We were talking really a lot is. about that last yeah. week. Um, so I say, is that, is that number three? Is NWA number three now? I mean, they, they could, it could be number with three. the buzz that they have right now. Yeah. Well, I think the big thing is, uh, each of these organizations is actually trying uh, to carve out their own identity and adapt at the same time. And, and this yeah. is something that I kind of preach on the local level too, right? I mean, you know, identify, you know, obviously IWC does their thing. RWA does their thing to very good effect. Mm-hmm. And then we talk about fight society needs to do something very, very different. Rise needs to do something that sticks out from the other thing. They can't be just another wrestling company, right? You know, and with Rise, I love Brandon K. Brandon K is one of the nicest people I've ever met. Uh, in the industry and I want him to succeed Mm -hmm. because of how much uh, I respect him as both a person and a wrestler. Uh, I feel like I'm not exactly sure if they're trying to hope to get some of the Pittsburgh crowd to come all the way out there. And I think if that's the case, that will hurt them. Mm -hmm. They need to uh, carve out, uh, you know, a fan base that's there. And it's kind of hard in that spot when they're essentially an hour away from here. Yeah. And that is, um, and, and that is, that is, 
they're that is identified and they're working on that and 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 they're doing great shows out there mm-hmm. and 2pw again all the way out the other direction too mm-hmm. but also i think i think a lot of these are serving like i feel like vice society serves mckeesport right like yes. they can be regional and and everything um and and those are all you know it is a crowded market you know i mean just the mm-hmm. last two weeks right uh, one i mean re- it's, it's about to get even more crowded yeah yeah i mean it it really is and um, I think I think that's you know okay. Well, then what are we going to do to make it different? You can't do what IWC does, what RWA does. All right, what RWA does and works with them, they've been doing for ten years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that is those people. And literally, if you go look, uh, we have a lot of matches from as far back as twenty ten, I think. And uh, you will see the same faces. Mm. Like that's a fact. And and you can't, you know, you're not competing. And, and to a point, you're not competing because those people don't cross over quite as much. Um, but it is happening, it, it, and this is happening in different towns around. Like you have to look and say, "Hey, we're going to put out wrestling." You're like, cool. What's going to make me come other than it, it being wrestling, right? Yeah. You know, uh, KSWA has their niche that works very well for them. You know, they have a vibe that works very well for them, and fans that like what they put out, fans yep. that like what Fight Society puts out. Well, what here's RWA's the thing: KSWA has two advantages. One, they have at least they have smart business people mm-hmm. who understand who their fan base is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And two, location. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, you can get foot traffic to Spirit Hall. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's huge. When yeah. you can get foot traffic and, you know, your ticket prices uh, look, are 10 bucks for Lawrenceville, 10, 10 bucks to do something for fun at Lawrenceville, at Spirit Hall, where you yeah, can get a yeah, uh, food yeah. and drink. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That $2 everything. PBRs, man. What's $2 that? PBRs, <laughs> yeah. $2 PBRs. Well, here's the thing. I also, they also, from time to time, carry Fury beer. So I'm just like, you know, I, well, here, I'm I like good. to toot my own orb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, By the know, way, uh, and we mentioned his name is Happy Hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's what, what I'm friends with uh, Justin Sane, and actually, in one promotion, my tag partner is Joey Cuervo. And, you know, we're just like trying to figure out how do we get happy hour there when, you know, imagine halfway through a match, if I need a pick me up, I just walk out to the bar, drink my own damn beer, uh, <laughs> and go back in and finish off. <laughs> the ultimate, the ultimate, the it's definitely the ultimate uh, uh, cross promotion, right? Right, absolutely. Like, uh, well, in, in Wrestle Rex, I think they're hitting that formula too. Like you know, their show last week. Like I don't think it hurt for me in the day after AEW. You know, but I mean, it was something very different. You know, it's a spectacle, and and, and I think um, everybody's finding their niche and finding what that is. And um, and 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 you know, it, it comes and goes. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it's it's the fans that I saw at Ring of Honor. I don't think I've ever seen at an indie show. Really, really. There was, I, I mean, and I'm, I had a lot of that I see everybody that you start picking up. I mean, you, you guys go to a bunch of shows. You, you pick up on familiar faces out yeah. there, right? And there was no, there was pretty much zero sense of familiarity except for that one guy that always starts a chance. <laughs> <laughs> At all the Ring of Honor shows, <laughs> right? That is, you know, the, the, the crowd fluffer I call, right? I had that same reaction to AEW, but to me it was... I've seen WWE crowds. Yes. And I've never seen anybody there from an, a WWE crowd. <laughs> yeah, so, no, yeah. no. Versus AEW, it was like, oh, hey, there's everybody. There's a bunch of people from RWA. There's we a bunch of people old, I know from we, IWC. We there's some people guy, from Rise. An old, like, member of the Mayhem's, Mayhem show. Family. Kind of. Wait. We saw a fan of the show, Sword. We, we, we did. We, wait, are we talking about the same one? Are we? Are we talking about the tall one? Yeah, we're talking about the tall one. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, yeah, well, absolutely. It all, came, like, it all comes I, together. I haven't seen him at a WWE show. I haven't seen him at a show in four years. I don't think I've seen him since Ring of Honor and Wheeling, to be honest. And that I was, haven't seen him that since That was AJ Katara. Styles and Matt Seidel in the main event, which was fucking amazing. Oh, I remember that. Oh, those were the days. I was pretty shit-faced. And- <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my gimmick. <laughs> I think it's the first time I ran into somebody and said, hey, you should come to, uh, I got handed a Black Diamond Wrestling Flyer. I'm like, I'm not I- coming back out here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, jeez, I remember uh, during that show, I think that was when I was like taking a break mm-hmm. and like I was, uh, I was just hanging out and somebody's like, when are you coming back to Black Diamond? I remember being so hammered because I was going to get another beer, and I said, "God, I'm like, I don't love it. They don't fucking book me anymore. I don't." Love it. <laughs> Watch who you're handing to, man. <laughs> so I got I got handed a Mick Foley flyer at the AEW. I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to have his Oprah on two weeks. So you know, Matt Light, I think, is coming on next week on the show. So nice. I think he just shaved his head. 
Yeah. So Ooh. new look, Matt Light. Unless that was a joke pick, I'm not sure. You can never tell with Matt. Yeah. So, but anyways, uh, a lot of wrestling, a lot around, a lot of this, a lot, of, a lot, of around. This, a lot of around, a lot of going around, <laughs> a lot of pizza going around. Yeah, you know what's going around, and maybe, pizza's round. Sort maybe, maybe. pizza is round, Riz. That's a good segue. And it's supporting, about, uh... Uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni piece. Can somebody hand me a visual aid over here? Uh, can somebody give me That'd an assist right. here? Uh, of course, here in the Pittsburgh area in Beachview, Carnegie, East End, this. PNC Park. I'm sorry, oh, my, pro- a, my producer went here. home, so I don't have I an got assistant. I got a good view here. So I'm asking the guests. There it is. So, uh, Our is friends, any... Slice on Broadway. I think we got a couple slices in here. Is there Slice on Broadway <laughs> here in Pittsburgh. And of course, there's not Slice, slice everywhere. <laughs> They're all, But there's a lot of them, and they've been growing since we've been here. <laughs> we <laughs> like to say it's the pizza mayhem bump around here. <laughs> so if you... A lot of slice on your Broadway. Go find a Broadway Avenue. They're in every damn town, it seems. Mm -hmm. And uh, take a picture. Tweet them under PGH underscore slice on the Twitter. And tell them you want a slice on your Broadway. It's really great. SliceOnBroadway.com. Thank you so much for supporting the show. It's so great. Subtitles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever he said, that's what she said, I guess. (laughs) Thank you so much. You guys are going to hear from Katie for a minute. I want to be back with a big question, and I'll finish this slice. (laughs) I'm about to go grab a slice. Take it away, Crady. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. I got a question for you guys. We are back. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and it just hit my... I got to go with it before I lose it. I got... Because because Ronnie inspired me. Because once again... He's just mesmerized by the fact that Ultimo Dragon performed in the parking lot across the street from here. And he got dressed here. No, 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 he did not. Oh, he didn't. <laughs> you got all. You know, you're 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 amazed by the things that didn't happen of the day. Well, you know, but Ultimo no, Dragon no. is the shit. No, but like like the closest to to sign people was Bull James in here. Yeah, yeah that was pretty cool. That is still cool. Yeah. I was just walking up like, hey, is that guy? He's just nice watching the Steeler game. Yeah, they're just watching the Steeler game with everybody else. Nice. You know, <laughs> and you know. Um. Anyways, uh. So so. Damn it! Now I lost the question. <laughs> so I mean, you. So you know, it's something that happened here. You, yeah. you 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 somehow didn't know about it. Obviously, you weren't listening to this show at the time. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> what is like your surprise? You know, we were talking. We were we were sharing our virtual stories on the break and some <laughs> other wrestling stories and other interactions. What is um, your greatest surprise interaction with wrestling in, let's quote, the real world? <laughs> so, like, uh, you know, for instance, like, hey, uh, oh, I think no. T. Rantula just passed me at the airport and I didn't get nacho. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for instance, you know, or actually, speaking of the airport, one time I, I, it was WrestleMania weekend and I ran into Brett Baker uh, because we were in, uh, like a terminal next to each other and she was going out for WrestleMania. I was going out to not WrestleMania for work, unfortunately. <laughs> it was just like, ah. So and we got to chat for a bit and catch up. But um, but yeah, what is your your kind of like, you know, weird in day-to-day life wrestling interaction, close call kind of situation, if that kind of gives that broad enough for you guys. Okay. Uh, nothing with Virgil, because we have enough of that. Right. That's enough of <laughs> right. those that's, stories. That's enough for right? uh, I feel like I feel like between think, the four of us we've been around enough to be to have some kind of surprise stuff pop think up. Now like we have that. to pay yeah. Virgil for mentioning Virgil a lot. So <laughs> yeah, 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 try yeah, not yeah. to. Yeah. He, he wants that fuck money, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well I think I have a negative uh, like an anti story. So WrestleMania weekend, I was in New York City. My sister lives in New York City, so I was actually planning on visiting her. I happened to have WrestleMania tickets, and I was also kind of on standby, hoping to get booked on the uh, uh, Drags and Dropkick show. Uh, So, you know, kind of on standby there. But uh, that being said, that Friday, I got uh, into New York City. I actually, I forget where I was headed, but I was uh, outside of MSG. Uh, Basically, I was headed to the... uh, uh, train station, the subway station. I forget where I was going. Oh, that's right. I was going to City Field. I was going to City Field, uh, and I was catching a train there uh, to catch the Mets game. But so I was outside of MSG. There are a couple of young guys dressed up in suits, suitcases. They were uh, obviously ROH wrestlers, uh, and they just looked very. They looked very touristy. Lost. They're sitting there, just like I was like, 
oh man, I've never seen anything like this. And, you know, other people were just kind of gawking at them. And I'm just like, you know, just to save them from touristy embarrassment. I just ran up to them. I get it. You guys are workers. I saw where the door was that the workers were going in. So I was just like, you guys want to go in there, go in there ASAP because you're <laughs> really capturing a lot of unwanted attention right now. So that's you say, what were, because, they, were they the Japanese, were they New Japan guys or? Uh, I think one of them was a New Japan guy. Okay. Yeah. But uh, that being said, I was just like, you know, the last thing you need is to be caught being very touristy because then every uh, everyone who's uh, looking to, uh, you know, turn you into a, a street mark is going to come after you. Uh, so I was like, you know, the last thing you need is for your first experience in New York City to be pickpocketed. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. one. Two, the uh, anti-story, uh, the real anti-story was Kelly Cl- I already met Kelly Klein several times from Angel Gate. She knows who I am. I know who she is. She was uh, dressed in street clothes, walking by. I was like, hey, Kelly, how's it going? Kelly? Hey, hey, Kelly. And I'm sorry. I, it's not like I look like everybody else, in fairness. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, if you've met me before several times, yeah. let's be honest. You're, going, you're not going to mistake me for somebody else. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So Kelly just literally just kind of walks by me. I'm just like, Hey Kelly, what's up? Kelly, Kelly, angel gate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Her, her, Fine. Lack, her lack of shits was just yeah. like, uh... <laughs> and I'm just like, I, I'm from New York city. So I'm the native and I'm kind of getting hosed by this outsider. <laughs> Roddy, you got one? Uh, well, there, there's a few from, uh, New Orleans, WrestleMania. Oh uh, Yeah. Uh, see Dude, here. Have you seen Mad Mike's Mad Mike and Carlin's uh, uh, mini documentary from that weekend? Yeah, I did yeah, actually yeah, watch yeah. it finally because they were telling me about it. Um, let's see here. We were walking the streets. We ran into uh, Chavo Guerrero, Matt, or uh, fucking what's his name, uh, Jack Hager. Mm. Um, it's like what's what's his name this week? Yeah, what's his name this <laughs> yeah. week? I was playing WWE All Stars last night, and he popped up getting thrown around by Big Show in one of the clips. I'm like, oh, hey, <laughs> yeah, they were, they were all walking the streets. So just me being the jackass I am, I'm like, high five, guys, and they're all giving us high fives. And then we ran into um, oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, what is it? Something Grim. Uh, Simon Grim. Simon Grim. Mm-hmm. We ran into Simon Grim, mm-hmm. and I don't know why I popped so hard for him for some stupid fucking mm-hmm. reason. So like big vault villains fan. Yeah, I was. Yeah. And uh I got a we got a picture, me and uh Rick Starter Morgan. We got a picture with him. And we were talking. I I went up to him I'm like, look, I'm like, I don't mean to be a pain in the ass. Like stop you get a picture. He's like, you know what a real pain in the ass is? When you're bleeding out of your asshole, that's a real pain in the ass. Wow. <laughs> he's just he's like let, he's like, let's get a fucking picture together. I'm like, <laughs> hey man, let's cool. We bullshit with him for like ten minutes. And then uh, I had a beer and dance with uh, Ivory at a Pittsburgh theme bar. And uh, it was fun. Just You go out there and just be social with everybody. Awesome. Ivory is really nice. Yeah. She's it's like, you're, nice it's like they know you're like a part of the family. Yeah. So like yeah. they can, they can like pick a worker out like yeah. in a fucking crowd and they're like, yeah, just come and hang out with us. Like, yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Riz, you have one that's not Virgil calling you. <laughs> I'm very socially awkward, sort. No, no. Um, these, I don't think these guys. I don't think these guys have you, seen you attempting to to uh, interview, interview RJ City and Dalton Castle at the same time. At the same time, there was that one. Oh wait, did you um, do the Shane Taylor one that I had to pull? Yeah, the Shane Taylor when he who, who was it? Was it Plumber? Uh, yeah, he, Plumber, he, Plumber like, ran to be pulled because he was kind of goofing around and he was kind of a big monster at the time there. I'm going to make sure that goes back up, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my... I actually have two stories. And they, they both are my socially awkwardness coming out. Um, <laughs> we love your awkward one, stories, Riz. One, I was at a, uh, a convenience store, a giant eagle. Uh, and... Sam Adonis walks by. I didn't know if it was Sam, if Sam Adonis. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm looking. I'm like, I know this person. Blonde hair, tall, looks very. Res- I, I, I really, I, I put together that he was a wrestler because <laughs> he looked like a wrestler. And I'm like, if anybody, I know I saw him. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I know I saw him from somewhere. 
And then I pass him again. I'm like, I know you. I didn't say that. It was all in my head. And then the third time I just go, I go my head, again, in my head, I'm like, oh. And I just do like a little head nod and walk away from Sam Adonis. Uh, second one, I, met, I, I saw Elias at uh, Crunch Fitness at one time. And again. Is this, is this post Elias or uh, Logan Chulo? post Elias. Days? Okay. This is Elias Elias. Okay. Uh, and again, I'm looking. I open the door for him. I just give him a head nod and walk away. Like I, I don't, I don't, I feel like they're wrestlers. They're the more important. They're, I, they're, I gotta, they're, I, I gotta, I gotta share with you, Riz. Uh, hopefully, this makes you feel better. Usually, when I see a wrestler like that, even if it's one I know, like my thought in my head was, I don't have anything important to say to them. No, <laughs> so the same I'm thing not going to say anything like, and I'm give just, them a head. I'm going to sound like a fan. Yes. If I if I open my mouth, I'll be like, yes. "Holy shit, you're Elias." Like, mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to say that, but I, I just like <laughs> whatever I'm about to say right now is probably going to sound stupid in general. Yes. <laughs> and, so I'm like, yeah, okay, like, and it, I and I have an inner monologue with myself going, "Holy shit!" And like, it, 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 my like, my excitement goes up, and mm-hmm. that was that's the thrill of it for me. It's just uh, that little weird in our interactions. It's uh, it's like the time I met the Miz for the first time, mm-hmm. and uh, we went over to you know the hotel we always stay at. Yeah, um, yeah. So like he's walking in, and I was wearing a B, uh, the awesome B Miz T shirt. You know. Yeah, I think I think you told a story recently. Yeah. Uh, maybe not on here, but yeah. But he's just like, "Hey, nice shirt," and I'm just like, "Uh, it's the Miz." <laughs> 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 like, I, I can't even say anything to him. But I was yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. like, yo, thanks. thanks like you're processing bro. it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I'm we like, made eye contact, like, and he smiled, and I'm like, yo, thanks, bro. Uh, well, it was the time that um I was at an ICP show, and I, what Attila was opening. Mm-hmm. I, I've talked about this on the show. I was at the Rex, and mm-hmm. I'm like looking. I was like, I think that's Paige, and she's like, I freak for me, right? Yeah. And Paige is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm just like, I think that's Paige. I'm like, I'm not going to say anything to her because I don't want to like blow up her spot and have mm-hmm. everybody, you know, kind of like the, I don't want people to like start, you yeah. know, fanning her. Right. And then like afterwards, after she had walked away and stuff, I just like started looking on Twitter. I'm just like, oh shit, she tweeted she was going to be here and said, say hi. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> so it's like a black craft wrestling when all I wanted to do was like jump in her arms because like I'm, a, I'm in love with Paige. Yeah. So I'm just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Because that would have gone over well. No, it's fun because like, <laughs> oh, another t- another man jumped in my arms again. Right. You know, like, <laughs> I must be in Pittsburgh. No, like, <laughs> I mean, she lives here now, so like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's crazy. Um, I don't know if Bobby's in the chat. There was a there was a another convention uh, story. He he and I were walking, and then we pass. I believe it was a cafe, like a like a like a, a line and we're and bobby goes that's melina and melina oh. turns around to him and like gives him a little like rolls her eyes and goes back to her getting food yeah. and never and and you know bobby he he's like oh man he's then now melina doesn't like me and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got big shot. Of, you got big shot by Molina. Yeah, was like yeah, come on. But it, it's it's Molina. What do you expect? Sorry, right, Paul. We've I all just, been big shotted by a women's wrestler. That's before. right. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Uh, from the chat, uh, Alex Miller. He met uh, Dario Cueto one time. Papa Cueto. Uh, Tina Keys buying shots for Nigel McGuinness. Oh, that's fucking Ooh. cool. And it sounds like it was it was relatively recently too. <laughs> so that's some. That's one of those guys I would just like to sit down and talk to. And pick mm-hmm. his brain. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's crazy. They were the 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 they did the top five of like like oh, most badass champions or something in Ring of Honor that popped up all of his stuff. I was just like, yeah. damn, he was incredible. Yeah. I got mm-hmm. to see him once in yeah, in jealous. Hammerstein ball, Ballroom. Hammerstein Ballroom. It was a final battle. It was uh I don't know what, two thousand seven maybe? I remember <laughs> like one of the first or second times we went up to New York City to visit Mad Mike and and it was just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Nigel McGuinness could have been WWE champion. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, They did that easily. On him. Yeah, you know, I, I'm glad they kind of did that and 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 kind of recognized that too. You yeah. Know? So I, hey, you know, a guy like that, I'm glad he's there. He's making the money for all the work he put in and helping guys. You know, mm-hmm. that's you know, for all this other stuff that happens, 
that we're complaining about earlier on the show, like at least that good stuff does happen there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's kind of, it's not all bad, mm-hmm. thankfully, but it's just difficult sometimes. Um, finally, is there anything else? Uh, was there somebody, we were talking about AEW beforehand. Was there anything, anything big happened from there? I didn't watch Dark yet. I didn't watch either. NWA Power. I love NWA. Uh, they all come and, out tonight, so we, we, yeah. it's kind of hard to get them in before before the right. show. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but MGF um, was guest commentator on Dark. Really? That makes it worth checking in to begin mm-hmm. with. Okay. Now, is Taz a commentator on Dark? He was when they were in Philadelphia. So he it was? just that's it. It was nice. It was cool. It was cool okay. to have them on there. But it was just kind of they do like special little things when they're in town like that. Okay. Uh, a, a couple of times. So I mean, it's it, it's it's a good show. Have you watched one of the Darks yet? No. So it's sometimes, sometimes at least like the people that were at the the tapings last week said that um, there's better matches sometimes on Dark than there is the main mm. show. Yeah, like matches, right? Mm. So except for that uh, that women's match. Mm. Yeah, that four way women's match. Yeah, really, that was brutal. That was a little rough. Uh, However, that three way match with. Uh, uh, Darby course, Allen. Darby Allen's the fucking man. I love yes. watching Darby Allen. He, in fact, I remember when uh, they did that show in Monroeville uh, a few months back. Uh, yeah, Darby he, Allen, uh, JT Dunn. Be good. That was that a was terrific the, uh, match. That was the NEW show where they did the kind of the Bruno uh, he, memorial. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that match, Darby Allen, JT Dunn. That was fantastic. Yeah, Darby, uh, Allen's Darby really Allen is great. Uh, I will say, mind you. Uh, Orange Cassidy is my spirit animal, and uh, <laughs> love Orange Cassidy. and the whole uh, best friends as Rick and Morty with uh, Rick and Morty doing the uh, uh, entrance uh, yeah. was fantastic. Where's the mask? We have the mask here, so we, uh, we have. Over there. <laughs> Why is it not on set? I got it. Hold on. Uh, we because we, uh, we, we uh, Ronnie actually got the mask, or somebody got the mask uh, for yeah, you. Actually, somebody, if you want to give a shout out, uh, Bree Ramsey got me the mask. Yeah. Was was there? Stood in T- line for Tony, a while. Uh, Tony Johnson's girlfriend. Yeah, it was sitting there at the table at Black Diamond. I'm like, if nobody claims this mask, I'm taking it. <laughs> I was like, I, it was like everybody's leaving, and if I'm like the last person out, this thing's mine. Uh, so, and then you sent it to me. You sent it with me anyway. So uh, I don't know why she she like hid it from the awesome cast for some reason. I think it, I think it freaks out producer Missy. To be quite honest, <laughs> could be I, the I, just, eyes. I mean, look it's at the it. eyes. I mean, if you're not like into the Rick and Morty thing, like it, it could be. Very, very, it, it could be very disturbing. Do you do you want me to do the uh, the Morty voice? Do you want to uh, the yeah, yeah, but you have to put the mask on first. Yeah, I'm Hold on, do uh, do the uh, thing. Uh, Oops. Somebody's having oh. a beer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, geez, guys, I don't know. I, I don't know, Rick. I don't know what we're gonna do here. God damn it, Morty! You know. Sometimes Morty, you just you're just too much. You gotta get you gotta get gotta get, get it together, man. I'm, I'm really sorry, Rick. I'm doing the best I can with what I got, Rick. I'm sorry. <sighs> wow, uh, that was that was that was some fun crossover they did last week. It was, <laughs> it, I was. For it really. It was good. Like yeah. I, I, you know, it, 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 we we got Jim Ross, Jim Ross saying rubber. Oh rub- yes, that was. I fantastic. can't believe he even said that. Shit. Yeah, was it was like, like oh, uh, Jr. Would you please read what, what I wrote <laughs> on this piece of paper? That was the best. It's like. Hey, Wubba Lubba, let's, dub dub. It, it's like let's make our grandfather re, uh, say millennial words for at Thanksgiving, you know, kind of territory. But no, I'm, it's kind of like that Family Guy episode where Peter made the ghost of his dad say, "You must go to the Dago Bus system." <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! I mean, it, it, it brought me back to the days of Slim Jim and Halloween Havoc. So, I mean, but yeah, I, I have but to as a video that. game fan. Mm-hmm. Seeing uh, Kenny Omega come out as Sans. So help me with this. Jail. I don't know anything sure. about that. I'm like, oh, he's coming out of the thing. Oh, he's doing a cosplay thing. Oh, all right, it's Halloween, right? What the Undertale hell did he get? Is, Undertale. It is one of the best indie games mm-hmm. ever. Highest selling really? on multiple platforms. It started on Steam. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and and like, just to see how Toby, it, I think it even started on uh, Kickstarter, Kickstart, and uh, just it was a is a funded game that is now huge mm-hmm. as a as a successor, and I forget what it was called, but there, there's a game successor as well for it. But to see a, a it is it is 
pretty damn and, amazing how and, and it's a top well down eight bit sixteen bit style. Um, yes. I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up an RPG. It's a, it's a turn based. It's kind of a turn based RPG, like an old Final Fantasy or something. Yeah, it's a right? Final Fantasy game. Yeah. So I mean, so uh, that, there was that, there was what... a lot of comparisons to uh, Mother and. Mm. Uh, no, it's Christmas. Stardew Valley, I think, was one of them. Uh, but yeah, to see how far that game has come, mm-hmm. to see how far like the promotion on AEW mm-hmm. on a wrestling promotion using their music now and likeness, and also like like I mean, this is nothing new. Kenny Omega did this kind of stuff in Japan a lot. Like he would mm-hmm. come out the Kingdom, uh, uh, Wrestle Kingdom, mm-hmm. for something like that too. Uh, so I mean, a, a, again, you know, he came out the Mega Man though. Mm. Did he come out the Mega Man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. it was Mega Man, but this is like lower than like the top, lower tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's that popular of a game. That's awesome. They now got just exposed to it. anybody like, what the hell was Kenny Omega? And they found out uh, uh, Undertale and, and, and everything too. That's awesome. That's that's one of those nice New Japan things that I think has come, come over with them. I, I like that. That's I, happening. I, I might I might play that on Risk Plays Games on Twitch. <laughs> there you go, Risk Plays Games. Uh, plug it, plug it, plug it. Also, uh, speaking of which, New Japan just announced. Uh, did I see uh, the Ace is taking on Chris Jericho? Do I have that right? Yes. Yes. With spiky jacket uh, and all. <laughs> yes. There was, I don't know, there was a promo. Uh, there was a lot of Japanese over it, but there was like dancing, dancing uh, uh, New Japan guys. And then Jericho comes in and kicks everybody's ass and says he's going to fight somebody. It's good. I'm in. Mm. I'm in. Okay. New Japan, let's do this. Uh, so, uh, Russell. I mean, King- you, got, you got that. You got Takahashi coming back mm-hmm. um, to face. J no to face Osprey, well Osprey, mm-hmm. which is going to be pretty damn awesome as well. Um, it's going to be a two day event. Take that yeah. WrestleMania. Yeah, mm. <laughs> suck it WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. So looking forward to that. Um, I'm going to be very tired rolling into that Black Diamond uh, taping that day. Uh, <laughs> second day. Holy shit. But you better believe the uh, all weekend Wrestle Kingdom slumber party is happening at this studio. Well, yeah. <laughs> because uh, it's uh, Saturday morning and Sunday morning. Oof. I'm in. Because <laughs> <laughs> if that's okay, I'm going to take that weekend off and I'm going to go yeah, watch yeah. Wrestle Yo, Kingdom. No, that's uh, no, yeah, it's blocked out on my calendar already. Yeah. Okay. It that's, is. All right. It yeah, is. It, it Should is. I bring a sleeping bag? Or yes. How, yeah, that's okay. probably a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. um, so there's that. Uh, so if, just, just bring the... Uh, Blankets from like nineteen nineties with the, with the either the dinosaurs or the Power Rangers I'm, on it. I might have to bring back Stoke Monkey. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, there's a little glimpse saw, on Instagram I saw, last I saw night. you brought him back. Once. There is. Listen, there's there, a room there's in my house. <laughs> there's a room in my house. I, I decided. I, I just kind of said this is my history room. It's where I stack my DVDs, <laughs> my CDs. <laughs> And old stuff from podcasts, and and the, and, and play uh, WWE All Stars on the Wii. The uh, greatest president of New Jersey. Yes, history. yes, the greatest president of New Jersey. Um, no to chairs, yay to bananas. Uh, was this? <laughs> it, there was there. We did a whole campaign. Yeah. Uh, with this, and then there was a cocaine scandal um, that, that put him out of the race. So this is what podcasting was ten years ago to us. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, I just got an email from Lipson like "Happy birthday, fifteen years of podcasting." And like, cool, I've been around for fourteen of those. Uh, so, <laughs> anyways, uh, it is time to find out what you learned from wrestling this week, Ronnie Starks. What'd you learn from War Games this week? That uh, never let a kid kick you in the ribs. Yeah. That's never kicked somebody in the ribs before. <laughs> Yeah, I'm about 95 percent sure I have a cracked rib right now. Oh man! Oh, that was, Should I hey, get that man, out? it's war games. Uh, yeah, that's what I get. Yeah, that's your war games um, but, scar. But in all honesty, uh, that was probably one of the highlights so far of things well, I've done in wrestling. What was it like being inside that big blue cage? Fucking awesome! That was great. <laughs> I, I got did a, I look happy the entire time? Uh, you look like you're having a good time. Because I was pretty yeah. fucking happy yeah. the entire Dude, time. Dude, well, I, I went in to fix the GoPro, and uh, that didn't work. Uh, yeah. and, and then they put on the final side, and I'm just like, I'm in the cage. 
cage. <laughs> Dude, after the show, I got back in the cage, and I, I, and I just kind of stood there for a little bit. You're not the only one. I saw a couple of people get in or just like just, just rolled in there and stood one smoking a cigarette. Uh, so, uh, but it was like, I mean, it's really cool. It yeah. it does feel like obviously it's uh, you know you see it's wooden and everything, but it's it's yeah. it's still a very cool look, a very good feeling. Yeah. Uh, it is now live on Indie Wrestling Network, by the way. Uh, like as of like I don't know two hours ago actually yeah. so <laughs> was, uh, so if you want to watch that that's a part of that <laughs> uh, we have a highlight video and gifts on on our Giphy page linked at Indie Wrestling US mm-hmm. uh, so you can see uh, uh, some of the highlights from that mm-hmm. I loved all the good guys came out in Dudley gear that was great <laughs> I love that I was sign guy Dudley your sign guy Dudley <laughs> yes. Yes. yes happy hour what'd you learn for wrestling this week um let's see what i learned is george sucks apparently he really really sucks this is the referee and 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 everybody hates him in black diamond you know I, who else sucks nick apparently not as much as george because uh you know what does it mean when uh, a referee when i'm showing up as a referee and i get <clears throat> a bigger pop than any of the wrestlers yeah it's a scary thing yeah, yeah. so that, that really says how much george sucks yeah, he walked out. He, he walked out with a beer to yep. referee a match. Yeah, full. You know, as <laughs> as Happy Hour does. <laughs> so, yep. Riz, sword. What'd you learn? I learned that uh, Pat McAfee is living his best life. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Pat McAfee. He just <laughs> showed up. One. Yeah, I think he's from Buffalo, so I think he was in the area. Uh, <clears throat> or not only in that, Buffalo, he showed up he? in mid. In, in, he showed up in mid. Uh, Smackdown. Yes. In, because I, I, I don't know where um in denim in shorts. Land. In denim shorts and a t shirt. So no, is not it, even, no 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 no. No. Not, get denim shorts and cut off hoodie. And a cut off hoodie. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he's just we, and he's just basically yelling all night, guys, I'm having the greatest time of my life. <laughs> and he kept waving over the at Stephanie too. McMahon who comes out. Yes. And he was <laughs> <laughs> he is I living she, what did she wave back <laughs> i think she did <laughs> but Get the nails and, and the he day. was up in the he was like one of the front well you're not front but he was in the back in the back and center with triple h at the end of the, <laughs> at, at the end of the show was he with the nxt guys yeah so it was like all the nxt guys uh trips and just pat mcafee hanging out yeah, just he's, he's living his best life oh my god that is funny. That is great. <laughs> like we all want to be Pat Mac Pat McAfee, but not have, and, but also not have any self awareness like Pat McAfee yeah. at the same time, right? You and he f- was actually really good at it. He was. Yeah. He was, he was very. <clears throat> bad. Hey, man. It's like, hey, we're gonna throw you to pinch it on our um, highest distributed television program. <laughs> and, and it was weird <laughs> that they like just decided to eliminate Aiden English in the middle of the. In the middle of SmackDown. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what that says about their thoughts on Aiden English, like, but uh, but uh, no, it was fun. It was absolutely fun. Um, Sword. Yes. What did you learn from wrestling this week? We alluded to this morning, or no, this morning. Jeez. This morning. God. Uh, <laughs> three hours of sleep, guys. Um, uh, we alluded to earlier on this show this evening. Uh, which happened like the, at three o'clock in the morning Kenny, yes kenny king uh 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 jumping over my head at uh at a stage ae ring of honor so uh, i learned awareness is key mm-hmm. that i didn't stand up so uh no there was a four-way match and you know doing this as long as you, you there's kind of like that wrestling math that happens i talk about right it's just like you just mm-hmm. process of like okay there's three guys in front of me they're getting really close to me wasn't there four of them <laughs> oh god there's a stage behind me because i've been in enough i've been around enough facade matches to know how this works yes. uh <laughs> and kenny king just goes sailing over top of my head I, you see you see in the video that that matt from the neighborhood over here who i believe was, was related to destin vane actually oh, uh, talked to him yeah nice. um and uh oh, you, it's, his, it's his cousin yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you you uh, you see me kind of looking over my, looking and then looking over my shoulder and that second time was when I just caught out of the corner of my eye him back there setting up for his spot his jump <laughs> and I'm just like oh this is happening okay but the greatest thing next to me one the the uh, the, the father and, and his his daughter next to me 
and we were just um um Lewis the nerd was doing security and uh he was <laughs> passing us the leftover uh confetti rolls that everybody throws in as you do at Ring of Honor. Yeah. And we just kept passing it to her. So she have she had more chances to throw stuff in. And she kept missing because we're on like the side that's the wider one that they do all the jumps on, right? Yeah. And she's just not making it. And then finally before the end of the night, she like caught the apron and it rolled in. Nice. And but in this spot, when you see the video, you see they're also oblivious to what's going on. They're watching the action just right in front of them, right? Um you see the instinctual father instinct fatherly instinct to protect the little girl from whatever is happening <laughs> and then immediately standing up arms raised <laughs> oh, it's just yeah. it was just the greatest moment of emotion mm. that i didn't realize was happening right beside me because oh, i was geez. already reacting to things wow. uh, and, and, and thank you again matt for a capture i, I was so pleased because i'm like that was cool mm -hmm. but nobody i know has honor club and nobody's gonna see this and then i saw myself tagged like 10 minutes later on twitter i'm like oh shit this is great. <laughs> so uh, that's fantastic. Um, and also, whoever took a picture of me in the blue cage and said, uh, despite all my rage, I'm just a sorg in the cage. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for that as well. You have no idea how much that, how much that means to me. Uh, I, I believe it's, I keep, I keep forgetting his Twitter name, but I think it's True Prince Pro on there. I know he does great stuff. Uh, says a lot of great things about, about uh, what we're doing over at Indie Wrestling. I really do appreciate that. So, <laughs> so thank you so much for that. I'm trying to pull it up so I can get your tweet right. Um, just, I usually just see it in passing. Uh, we'll get you later. Uh, so, uh, anyways, uh, from the chat room, I should probably pull that up here. True Prince of Pro is his. Uh, another Matt. So all the mats got me in there. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> in the ring. Uh, from the chats real quick. Uh, Tina says there needs to be a Meltzer and Seth Rollins debate on WWE backstage. Oh. That's what I learned. I yeah. guess I guess Seth went off on about him. I saw a little bit last night. Really? Uh, yeah. He, he called him like a, a violent found of misinformation or something. Wow. Like it was it was crazy. Wow. And I guess there was more today from what I'm, I'm hearing in the chat room. Dave Ponder learned to learn. I learned plan, 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 and give enough time for travel issues. Mm, there's that. Mm, yeah. uh, yes, and uh, there you go. Uh, so thank you guys, Riz. Thank you, Riz plays games. Riz plays games on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Riz plays games. Uh, I am 15 away from 100 followers. Woo. Uh, I also do subscriptions as well. Uh, if you have a Twitch Prime, if you have a, if you have Twitch Prime, which is through Amazon Prime, you get one free uh, sub sub per month, mm -hmm. uh, which is amazing. That I'm saying this, uh, like I said when I first started, I don't do this for I, I don't do this for money. Mm -hmm. uh, but knowing that I can actually do this now to get to know that some people are actually watching me, mm -hmm. it's pretty. Freaking weird. Riz is the, okay. Now he's going to be introduced as Twi Twitch superstars. Riz plays games <clears throat> in the future yes. episodes. <laughs> so there's that happening. I mean, start that now. Like right now. Just edit it right here. Uh, I think there, there, there's a little, little box right right below me, right? Right. Or, uh, well, no, I don't have that set up. There's not the Okay, never mind. Uh, we also have, of course, War Games veteran Ronnie Starks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Look>, God. <laughs> so, seriously, being in that blue cage was the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Um. You could follow. Thank me. you, Rick Diamond. By the way. Yeah. I, for building that shit. Yeah. That he's great. he's a fucking visionary. Honestly, God, that man <clears throat> creates so much crazy shit. It's ridiculous. But, you know. And I just to add to that, Black Diamond. For uh, for those of you out there who haven't made the trip out there, the production is actually really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The stage, the ramp, the setting, everything. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's very attractive to watch. And for me, both as a wrestler, uh, you know, sometimes I just lose myself as a fan just watching, you know, holy crap, this is a really good production. Yeah, mm -hmm. he does a good mm -hmm. job. Now, shut up and let me get my shit in. All right. Wow. <laughs> hey, now, hey, now, be nice. Wow. I'm not Nick Fair. Uh, hey, I, do, well. I do like you. Right. I, don't want, I don't want you to quit the business. <laughs> Uh, you can follow me on the Twitter. Uh, Just leave the Ecto, Ecto one out of it, please. Yeah, you, you stay away from my Ghostbuster toys. Uh, follow me at Starks Wrestling uh, on the Facebook, Ronnie Starks. Uh, on the Instagram, the Ronnie Starks. And I think that's all my shit. I think. 
I'm close to uh, 2,000 followers or 2,000 friends on the Facebook right now. <laughs> Happy hour. Well, uh, you can find me on Facebook at Wrestler Happy Hour. You can uh, find me on Twitter as FBC Happy Hour, on Instagram as Wrestler Happy Hour. Uh, yeah, just look for Wrestler Happy Hour, and you'll find me out there somewhere on the interwebs. There you go. And, of course, uh, we will be around. The IndiaWrestling.us team will be hanging out. We will be doing the live stream over at Fight Society at McKeesport. Ronnie Starks will be down there for that. Hey. Did, did you just say that? Maybe you did. I don't know. I didn't. There's uh, stuff happening. Good. good. Wait, <laughs> way to plug your shit. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I work there. I'm, I'm, Yay! I'm one third of the uh, tag team champions. That's right. Uh, That's right. Being defended this week, of course. And uh, you can please join us there. Uh, of course, we had the live stream, but nothing's like buying a ticket and being there in person because you mm-hmm. never know when you can get a wrestler in your lap and you never know what's going to be take a wrestler home night. Uh, so I, I want to be very weird. careful saying that around Angel Gate shows. Uh, but <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. There's, been, there's been a couple. Yeah, there, there was been girls in the audience being, getting chopped in in somebody's lap. Things yeah. that happens. Yeah. That seems to happen a lot there. If that's not, there, you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also Saturday, no matter what end of Pittsburgh you're on, you got a choice. You can go to Rise Wrestling down in uh, Lamont Furnace, PA, and uh, there you got PB Smooth and uh, the That's Iceman Tony Johnson headlining that one. What's that? It's Rise with a Y. Rise with a Y. Yes, not the women's promotion. Sorry, PB Smooth. <laughs> uh, and uh, also our friends at Prospect Pro Wrestling. They're leading into their first anniversary show, and they're doing a chase for the gold, uh, setting up for their titles uh, uh, tournaments next month and uh, a lot going on there so please go check that out prospectprowrestling.com that's over uh, in Leechburg, PA so uh, out towards 28 what north of you I, I believe in Monroeville uh, Riz if I'm not mistaken hey maybe mm-hmm. you should join me for that if you're free uh, so because I'll be out there doing that uh, I believe Missy and Rob will be uh, hanging out at Rise Wrestling covering that for us I'll be at Rise and uh, for generally and Ronnie will be there too uh, your boy Great Alexander had a good look on uh, uh, Sunday at Black Diamond too mm-hmm. um, but uh, very proud of him Remind me to talk about his Instagram sometime on the show. Oh yeah, we, <laughs> it's a, that's a thing. Uh, but yeah. uh, it's great. Uh, so go and of course everything else in the area. If you're in the area, want to see what's coming up or see. Somebody said when you if you want to find out when Sorg doesn't sleep, go to PittsburghWrestling.com. Uh, Sorg ever sleep? Probably more or less accurate. I mean, you barely sleep. Man. I mean, I feel only filmed two of the uh, eight shows that I attended last uh, a couple weeks ago. So. Uh, and so there's that too. Oh, I didn't sleep today, so case in point. Uh, so go check out all that. Please support indie wrestling. Uh, please support all the friends of the show and promotions uh, here in the Pittsburgh area or wherever you might be. I know Tina uh, shares uh, a few from her area as well. Wherever you are, there's probably indie wrestling nearby. Mm-hmm. You can find it of some sort. Support it. Or they're online. Everywhere. Thank you everybody for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.